Zoro being the vice captain, a topic I was surprised was even a discussion. And while there are a lot of great stuff out there, I've always felt like some people kept missing the mark a little bit. So I wanted to give my two cents on the matter. I want to make my position clear right away. Zoro is the only member of the crew who is worthy of being the right hand man to the future pirate king. Why do I say this? Before I get into anything else, let me just point out that Oda himself has stated that Zoro plays a role like a vice captain, that his strength is second only to Luffy and that he fights the enemy organization's second strongest. He may not have the official title of vice captain among the crew but it's clear from Oda's statement that he definitely plays that role. Basically he's the unofficial vice captain in that sense. And for those who argue that he's not the vice captain because he's never been called that within the crew, the reason for that is that the Straw Hats are an unusual crew. They don't follow any hierarchy other than Luffy being the captain and don't have any officers so of course they don't have an official vice captain. The crew operates on trust, friendship and understanding rather than formalities or rankings. They are simply Nakama. Getting validation from the author himself should be enough but let me continue. Early on in the series, Zoro had been mistaken for the captain a number of times. This is mostly because of the intense aura he gives off. But more importantly, later on Zoro is called out as second in command and vice captain. Both Rouge and Bartolomeo have only known the Straw Hats through mass media, which means the One Piece world as a whole most likely sees Zoro this way as the second in command of the Straw Hat crew. There's also the fact that he was the first recruitment, making him the first mate by default. On top of that, going by the Roger comparison, Zoro would be the equivalent of Rayleigh, the man called partner by Roger. In any case, these were the more basic points about Zoro being vice captain. If we look a little deeper into the story, we can find a few subtleties showing the same point. First of all, there are two things that set Zoro apart from the rest of the crew. The first is the way Luffy treats Zoro when they meet. A quick side point. In case anyone forgot, Zoro is the only member of the crew who was specifically scouted out by Luffy. He wanted Zoro to join before he even met him. Anyway, back to the main point. After they meet, when Zoro tells Luffy of his goal, Luffy responds, Since you want to be a part of the Pirate King's crew, if you can't accomplish something that small, I'll be embarrassed. Zoro is the only one to hear such words from Luffy. For everyone else, he only cares that he likes them. With Chopper, for example, Luffy didn't even know he was a doctor when he invited him. He has even mentioned before that he has weak crew members that need protecting. Obviously, that doesn't mean Luffy has no expectation of his other crew members, just that he acknowledges that they are weaker. The second thing that sets Zoro apart from the rest of the crew is the fact that he was the only one who when Luffy recruited him had already begun his journey towards his goal. And that is a key point to keep in mind. Everyone else needed Luffy to come in and nudge them in the right direction. Without Luffy, Nami would have still been stuck under Arlong, not getting the push towards her dream. Usopp would still be playing pirate. Sanji would still be at his restaurant. And the same applies to everyone else. The only other person who was arguably going for their dream is Robin. But even for her, she was with Crocodile mostly for protection. Plus, in the end, she admits she's given up on her dream and even her life. The point is, Zoro was the only one who was able to take steps to achieve his dream without Luffy's help. And if Luffy wasn't there, Zoro would still be doing what he's doing. In that regard, he's equal to Luffy. And that is an important trait for a right hand to have. Especially the Pirate King's right hand. Because when it comes down to it, they are their captain's partner. So those were the things that set Zoro apart from the rest of the crew. So now we should also talk about Zoro's character and relationship to Luffy. It is a well known fact within the community that Zoro is incredibly loyal to Luffy and that they understand each other very well. Zoro's loyalty was highlighted in the three big moments at Mock Town when he accepted Luffy's decision not to fight back, at Thriller Bark when he accepted death in Luffy's place, and in Kuregina when he humbled himself to Mihawk in order to get stronger for Luffy's sake. Their mutual understanding is something that I personally believe is greatly overlooked by many within the community. So I'll go into a little more detail on that. What I want to mention is the fact that Luffy and Zoro didn't come to understand each other over time. It was instant. You could say they fall into the same wavelength as men. Just to show everyone what I mean, I'll refer to three moments which all take place early on. Number one, Luffy targets Helmepo despite Morgan being right behind him and Zoro targets Morgan to help Luffy. Here, despite having literally just met, Luffy knew Zoro would take care of Morgan so he would be free to target Helmepo and Zoro knew Luffy would go for Helmepo and so his job would be to take care of Morgan. Number two, Luffy tells Zoro to run. At that point, they both smile. Zoro then quickly creates a diversion then runs off carrying Luffy with him. 
Despite everyone else thinking Luffy meant for Zoro to just leave, Zoro knew exactly what Luffy was after. Number 3. At the end of the Syrup Village arc, when the crew is leaving, Usopp prepares to head out alone, but both Luffy and Zoro wonder why he's not getting on the ship. Zoro wondering about Usopp means he already understands Luffy to the point that he knows Usopp will join the crew without being told. That's 3 points within the first 44 chapters or 17 episodes, probably up to 2 weeks of story time. Last thing I want to mention is possibly the greatest moment for Zoro as the vice captain and that is his speech to the crew at Water 7 about Usopp coming back. In this moment Zoro showed how much he cared for the crew. He saw the dangers of what could happen if the crew were to lose their respect for their captain Luffy and he stepped in to prevent it. He had everyone take him seriously. Even Sanji who under normal circumstances would have argued with Zoro for shouting at Nami let it slide because of how important his words were. All these points, by the way, are why I think Joy Boy and others are completely wrong when they say Zoro will leave the crew in Wano. He is never going to leave the crew. So what do you guys think? Is Zoro the vice captain? Is there anyone else capable of fulfilling that role other than him? This is Anime Talks 101. So let's talk about it. Comment down below. I want to know your thoughts.